Hi, my name is Rachel Mercer, and I'm the artistic director of the Five at the First Chamber Music Series. We have a concert coming up this Sunday, November 7th at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, in person and live stream. And it will be hosted and take place at the Orleans United Church, which is just outside of Ottawa in Canada. It's called A Musical Celebration, and it features friends and colleagues, four of whom who are here with me today, Yosuke Kawasaki, Jessica Linnebach, Jethro Marks, and Joel Corrington. Welcome to all of you. And so we're going to hear a little bit about the music that we're playing on Sunday and I'll hear a little bit from all four of you. So first, Yosuke, um, you and I will be playing the world premiere of a duo for violin and cello by Kevin Lau, Canadian composer, called Intuition Number no. Two. And uh, Kevin spoke to me earlier uh, this week about, about the piece, and it, it, you'll see that in another video, but um, I know you've played a lot of Kevin's music um, in different kind of settings and formats. I'm just curious um, what your impressions are of this piece and other music of his, if you want to talk about that a bit. Yeah. Um... Well, my impression so far about this piece is uh, there's a lot of meter change in it. <laughs> and, you know, you and I still uh, have to rehearse it. So I think it'll come, you know, uh, come to shape as we're playing it. Um, my experience with Kevin's music, I think the first time I really played uh, an orchestral work by him was uh, when the National Art Center Orchestra commissioned a piece called Dark Angels for um, our collaborative uh, work with, with dance. And um, I seem to recall him saying that he had written the cello solo. There's extensive cello solo in that piece. Do you remember that? I, I think he said he wrote it with you in mind. He knew that you were going to be playing it um, in the orchestra. And I think um, you had just joined us as well, or about to join us. And um, yeah, that, so that was my, the strongest impression of, of his writing, that he had sort of tailored that solo to your sound and to your, uh, your personality or your technique. And uh, that really speaks to me uh, when, when, when I'm playing new works, especially. Um, there's 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 more involved somehow uh, in, in in working on it and playing it, knowing that the composer had a certain person in mind, you know. Uh, so I think intuitions is also that way, right? I mean, it was composed for you and Jonathan, and I'm trying to channel what he would have done in these passages here and there. But uh, uh, ultimately, I'm going to be playing it. So, um, but uh, yeah. Uh, love his music. I also played uh, uh, some chamber music of his, um, uh, Septet, I believe, uh, which was really uh, beautiful, nice. It's always, there's a lot of rhythmic energy in his, in his works, I find. Looking forward. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to playing a piece for you. I remember, actually, Jonathan and I read it through briefly, just um to, to in case we needed to give him any input and he we, you know it was just I love his music so I was just so thrilled to get to play this piece and finally finally perform it for a live audience um so Jessica um you're going to be playing first violin in the Paquito de Rivera's Village Street Quartet which is a really fun piece and you have your own string quartet your first violinist of the Ironwood Quartet and then actually in this program, you're gonna mix it up and play third or fourth violin, I think. Fourth, in, fourth yeah. violin in um, the Mendelssohn Octet. So I, I was just curious, um, what's special about string quartet playing and, and how do you see the different roles as you move around the different violins or, or not? Okay, well, I think anyone that plays in string quartets um, just, I mean, there's so much incredible music that's written for string quartet. Um, there's just such a huge um, repertoire. I mean, you just can't possibly learn it all. And there's just so much great music to discover. And I guess for me, like playing in string quartet, it's the most, um, 
it's the place where I feel like I can make the most meaningful connection with other people. Um, you're communicating directly with other, like so close to other people, you're reacting to each other. Um, and I just, I, I don't know, there's something just very special about being in that combination of four people. And I'm really looking forward to playing this piece because it's super, super fun. Um, you know, it's not a serious um, piece. It's a, it's a bit of a party. So I think we're going to have fun playing it. And um, in the octet, I mean, that's like the ultimate party piece for, for string players. I mean, it's just like the most fun. It's, you know, festival music. It's, uh, and I always, I love playing the fourth violin part because it's, um, you know, it's lower and it's, it's like a lot of inner voices, but it has a lot of energy to it. And it can sort of, you can have a lot of, um, you can drive it a lot from that, um, that part. And it has a nice solo in it too. <laughs> like all of a sudden it's like, cause it's all first violin. It's just like, oh my God, enough of the first violin. And then, sorry, Yosuke. And then all of a sudden there's this juicy fourth violin solo. And so it's super fun. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, thank you for that. That that, that solo is, is famous. Actually, Jonathan also loved playing that. <laughs> I mean, I think <laughs> all <laughs> violinists who know it, they're, they totally, they yeah. love that. So it's a secret, but not okay. anymore. <laughs> exactly. So, and actually also in the Mendelssohn Octet, of course, we'll be joined by three younger colleagues um, who were or are at the University of Ottawa, um, yeah. Emily Kistemaker, Patrick Paradine, and um, Christoph Chung on the second viola part. Um, and Jethro, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a secret that you started on the violin and then eventually you're like right now in the orchestra, you play, you're a principal violist and um, I'm wondering what what led you on that path. And I, I actually, of course, you still play violin. I've heard you play. I've played by, <laughs> with you playing on violin. And I've also heard you playing Paganini Caprices on viola. So, I mean, what what would you say to young, young maybe violinists? Some words of wisdom or encouragement to follow your path? Uh, I think... Uh... For violists to have started on viola, I think that's more the exception rather than the rule. Uh, there's um, uh, it's it's much much more common for for the violists to have started on violin. Um, I think mostly because of you know when we start we're kids, you, know, you you're playing on small instruments and small violas. Because of the nature of the C string and the the, the they, just, they just I think maybe I've played on one small viola that sounds halfway decent. You know, there it's, it's a small violins are, are sound sound a lot better. And of course, we're we're trying to make good sound when we start off. Also, there's a lot more tradition. Um, the violin in general, there's a lot more tradition. Uh, a lot more written uh, etudes and studies for the violin. We're, we're always trying to trying to develop that technique, um, and so uh, yeah, I started I started on violin. I I but I was kind of marinated very early on in the sound of the viola. My father played in the Vancouver Symphony in the seventies uh, when I was taking my first steps. Um, and so I think that influenced me. Um, I always loved the sound of the cello too. Uh, and so switching to viola, which I did in, it, as a sophomore in, uh, at Indiana University, uh, was studying with an Israeli teacher there, Yuval Yaron. And he found out that I was playing some viola on the side. And I remember him sitting me down and saying, no, Jethro, you have to choose. He said, you can't do both. And so, and luckily, luckily there was a, a fabulous Israeli um, viola teacher there, Tara Rod, who I was able to switch to very seamlessly. And uh, yeah, never looked back. And yeah, so. Uh, it's, um, I think it's best to, to switch though, if you, if you're drawn to the sound rather than, you know, if 
because there's there's not a not any good violists around. That's definitely good advice. Yeah, if you're in love with that sound, that's that's the best reason to to be playing that. And of course, I'm cello, so I I I'm on the dark side too. <laughs> I enjoy that. Thank you, Jethro. Yeah. Sure. Um, so Joel, uh, so happy you are going to be joining us in a role that I don't think it's been done so often, but you'll tell us more about that. You're going to be joining us in the Mendelssohn Octet on the second cello part, but I think you have your own, your own um, way and input with this, with this part and just wanted to hear a little bit about it, what, what we should expect and if it's been done before or... Please tell us more. Oh, it, it's been done before, but not like this. Uh, no, it's like Jessica said, it is the ultimate festival piece. Um, because it's done, I mean, it, at every summer festival, I mean, it's always done. And it was inevitable that I would get dragged into it at some point. But I've always played it as like a ninth instrument, like trying to turn it into a string orchestra piece. So, um, you know, that was, that was not so difficult because whenever something came up that was challenging, uh, I would just leave it out. So this is sort of different. Um, gonna have to play everything that's there, um, which, you know, why not just do it with another cello? Because I, it's not just a stunt, but what, I've, what I'm going to do is this. Um, It'll be, it will not sound like your normal octet <clears throat> because I have um, a, a forehand piano version by Mendelssohn. So you can see where he in, envisioned that it could take a lower octave. So what I'm doing is I'm following his, his you know, forehand piano thing so, because you know that there's so much that the two cellos do in unison, and I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to do it, especially because it's so high. That's how people usually do it. They, they take their basses and they like put on what's what's called high solo tuning. So, like, it's got a high C strip, um, and then they just play unison. I mean, it's a, it's a. It is a bit of a stunt, but I'm trying not to do it like a stunt. I'm trying to make it, you know, maybe people will hate it, <laughs> but it's gonna have a bit more of an orchestral flavor to it because I will be playing, if, it, if, it, if Mendelssohn wrote it in that octave, then I will be playing it in, you know, in only that octave. It will sound sort of like the Mendelssohn octet. The second cello will have a cold. That's what it'll sound like, you know, like under the weather a little bit. <laughs> but the rest of the time, it's going to have a bit more of, a, of an, a string orchestra feel to it. A lot of stuff on the C string. Won't that be fun? Yeah. <laughs> I'm really honored to, uh, to be included in this. And um, yeah, it's going to be, uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I love, I love the piece, even if I'm never allowed to play in it. I still love the piece. Finally, you're allowed to play it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm so looking forward to playing it with you. And good to know Thanks. that you're not going to be doubling me all the time. So no hiding for me. i got to make sure I'm playing all the notes. There you go. Um, so I just wanted to talk a little bit more about the dedication of this concert. This concert is dedicated to a man that we hold close in all of our hearts. He was also our musical partner in many ways, a violinist, sometimes violist, a uh, professor at the University of Ottawa, Johannathan Barrick, who passed away from cancer just over one year ago. And Yosuke, Jessica, and I and him actually planned this concert together um, in Orleans, where he and I lived. Um, and it's a beautiful thing to have this gathering of friends and colleagues who all knew him so well and for many, many years and worked together and hung out together and shared a lot of memories. So I just would lo love to have you guys share a little bit of that with us. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, there's so many memories um, to talk about, reminisce about. Um, I, I, I've always known Jonathan from afar. So he, he I don't think he knew me very well, but um, uh, I, when I was in, in at school studying at Juilliard, um, uh, there was a Nuremberg violin competition a long time ago now, and um, I just remember hearing his name all the time from my father, who was still teaching at Juilliard, and what a fantastic violinist he was, and, you know, um, <laughs> yeah, I went to hear the competition, so the finals were live in Alice Tully Hall, and, and all the violinists basically played um, a short recital, and I was immediately drawn to his sound and his playing. And ever since then, um, I, I just sort of uh, followed him, you know, just listen, listen to him. And, uh, and then he came here to Ottawa and I was a little bit intimidated because we never really sat down and spoke. And he invited both Jessica and me to uh, join him at the faculty. Uh, for the university here. But I remember we, we went out to Elgin Street Diner and it, there was this immediate uh, camaraderie or like just warmth, you know, uh, just exuding from him. And um, of course, I think he was well aware of our situation. Our first daughter was born around that time. And um, and you know, just just talking to him, I uh, I immediately wanted to be in his corner, kind of always. And um, and then we we you know we started playing together, and uh, you know we did that at a small festival in Prince Edward County together, where you were there as well. That was so much fun. Um, I I don't know I yeah I miss him yeah he was great Johansson and I, I met each other at the Ag Agassiz Festival in uh, in Winnipeg and uh, we were staying at the same hotel and and uh, uh, carpooling to the um, to the to the hall and everything and, and we like Yosuke said we we something there was something about him we just there was a immediate uh connection somehow through through I've I've always been affiliated with Israelis in one 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 aspect or another you know whether it be a teacher or my best my best friend through all through university was also Israeli and um and there's something that uh, that I, I really, it's almost like it's almost like he was a, a another brother, like an older brother to me. And uh, well, we just had so much fun. And I just remember uh, playing Brahms quartet with him and him and it being a very good performance uh, and him talking about that performance for years afterwards you know he would always bring it up and and, and uh you know want me to listen to it and uh but uh yeah it was it was um you know such a shock you know when i when he passed away and um he's sorely missed for sure I mean, obviously, everything that everyone's saying, it's true. He had, you know, he had such a huge impact on our, on our lives. And uh, for me, I was always amazed at, um, like, what a dedicated teacher he was, like, in, in every possible way, like, a support system, like, you know, violistically, like, just everything. He would just do everything for his students. And I just found that so um, inspiring and just, um, yeah, it really... Um, you know, made me think about, you know, if I taught in the future, how I would want to be or how I would, um, you know, how I would want to be for my students. And um, 
one of the awesome things that he would do, I don't know if this was twice a year or once, but he would host violin parties twice a year. He would host violin parties. And, you know, Yonatan loved food. And we loved it. And so these were always like, you know, I just remember going to your house and it was just like trays and trays of shawarma, potatoes, pita, hummus. Like it was just like the whole, basically the whole restaurant was brought into the house. And it was just, and like the kids were so happy. Everyone came and it was uh, just such a nice um, chance to be together in, in that way, you know, it's just uh, the happiest. And yeah, anyway, so yeah, that's all. Thanks. <laughs> There wasn't yogurt, though. <laughs> and actually, <laughs> there's a joke. I remember he told me he had these like very particular about which foods he absolutely detested, and yogurt was one of them. And I remember one time I was in the on the fourth floor at the university. I was like, you know, I was kind of near the back, like near his studio, kind of near the washroom. And he walked out, and I was just like eating this yogurt cup thing. And he came. I don't. know, He was probably six feet from me. We we're just chatting, and then he, all of a sudden he just went. Like this, like he looked like he was gonna vomit. <laughs> I was like, "That's right, you hate yogurt." So it was just it became this thing where every time he saw me, he kind of backed up. But anyway, <laughs> for fear of yogurt. Yeah, fear of yogurt. <laughs> he, I think you could smell it from like miles away. <laughs> Joel, we'd love to hear from you too, of course. Um, I don't know where to begin because he had so many different areas in my life that he had some effect. Um, one thing I wanted to say is like, you know, about the school. Um, when he came to teach there, it's like he took, he took the whole school and pulled it up and turned it into a school. It wasn't, it was like it was not a school before. And his influence there was way beyond the violin. I mean, he was taking care of my students. He was telling me how to navigate administration, how to navigate scholarships, placements. Um, I mean, he's irreplaceable. How much? how he transformed that school. Um, I, yeah, irreplace, like everyone always says that, irreplaceable. He's irreplaceable. Um, the, the other thing, and I, I talked to you about this, Rachel, and I don't think I really, <laughs> I, I haven't really explained it yet. But I, I have, I don't actually have a, a lot of heroes in my life, like my father, Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> um, but he, I don't even, have, like even my bass teachers, I, I would not call them heroes of mine, like, but, he was a hero to me. And at some point I gave myself over to him because I wanted to be his student. I wanted, and I was, it made me so happy to just take in everything that he had to say and everything, was, it was profound and silly and everything else. And um, my, my life is definitely improved, is definitely in a different place from knowing him. And, 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 and talk about fun, you know, that, you know, we did this, probably the greatest thing I mean, I was lucky. He played. We played a lot of chamber music together. He he did that for me and helped me out in you know like silly bass things and stuff. But um, you know, we played that Odyssey Grand Duo at Orford, and then 
<clears throat> of course, we had to do it some of it as an encore. So like from like the last couple of minutes, which are particularly silly things and harmonics. And he held his bow like German style, you know, German bow style. And he played like all the way to the end, like the last six pages holding his bow like that. <laughs> and it, it actually sounded great. And he was the first to say, say, well, I think I'm, be I'm better like that. <laughs> but the, the reaction that it got was, was like everything that we're talking about, about with Johannes and uh, today, it was spectacular and it was unforgettable. Thank you, Joel, so much. And I, I mean, we all feel the same way. And um, if so, so I challenge one of you violinists to do the the, the bass bow because <laughs> he would do it. <laughs> I want to see that. Um, and of course, the three young colleagues that will be joining us in the octet all worked with him at some point in different degrees. And so we're all going to be thinking of him and the audience to many, many, many people who, who know and loved him, um, love him. And, um, but we're also going to enjoy making this music together as friends and colleagues in, in that spirit. And I thank all of you for speaking today and being here with me and I'm looking forward to Sunday. <laughs>